أقول الحق تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتى ليتني لم اتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد اضلني عن الذكر بعد اذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للانسان خذولا In the day of judgment when everyone goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Haqq in the Quran describe that day very clearly and in this verse Surah Al-Furqan Allah states that day يَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ the ظالم the unjust will bite on both his hands usually you bite on one finger or two but he'll put both hands in his mouth, imagine, and bites on both of them. وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ Both hands. Try to do it and see how hard that is. But because of the surprise, because of the agony and echoing of that day, he was shocked. So he put his both hands and bite on it. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا He says, I wish I took the route behind Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. I wish I took his route. The straight path that Muhammad spent all his life showing the Muslims. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ The Prophet is the best example. And that day of judgment, you will cry. And you will bite on both hands. And you will scream and you say, I wish I followed the straight path. Young brothers, there's no token in the khutbah. I see some people whisper and talk to each other. When you do that again, your khutbah, your jum'ah is gone. You lost it. So please, if you not know because you didn't know, now you know. You can't even tell your friends, shh. Can't even play with pimples. Can't play with your cell phone. That will nil and void your jum'ah. It's like you've never been here. So be aware of that, brothers. I know some of us don't know, but we explain that. So that day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that this person will cry and bite on both hands and he said, I wish I followed the right path. And then he cried about another thing. Ya waylata, woo to me, severe punishment to me. I'm a loser. Why? Laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila. I wish. I did not take that person as my friend. Ya waylata, laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila. I wish I did not take this person as my friend. Laqad adallani ani dhikr. He misguided me. He took me to the wrong direction. He miscalculated and got me in the wrong direction and I lost my way. Friends, brothers and sisters, this is the topic of today. Who is your friend? Who is the person that you take to tell him your problems and your things? That's what the Quran focuses on. Listen to the teacher, the teacher of humanity. Muhammad ibn Abdullah, this teacher that he had the best tutor in the world, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. 
and Muhammad is the best teacher who will ever exist on the face of the earth. He doesn't just blubber, but he gives you every hadith. He gives you something alive to look at. What does Prophet Muhammad says about friends? See the beautiful hadith. Can't even forget it. He always gives you examples. He always gives you something alive to compare with. He doesn't just say, you know, don't have a bad friend, don't have this. But he gives you an example to live it, to know it. The example of a good friend and a bad friend. See the description? A lot of you go to universities. And if the teachers just go the equations or get blobber on without giving you an example, you would not know what happened in the topic. But Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Allamahu Shadidul Quwa, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam taught him. And who taught Jibreel? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said the example of a good friend and a bad friend. In what way? The influence on you. Because you are who you are with what your friends. Show me your friends. Tell me who your friends are. And I can tell you what kind of person you are. So he said that Jalees is Saleh. A good friend is a man who sells perfume. See, in the old time, you know, now we go in the mall and it's, you know, hidden in, a, you know, plastic or glass. But in the old time, the man who sells misc or Parfum, he comes in the message with a, with a, you know, a bag, a suitcase. And as soon as he opens it, the whole message smells beautiful. This is the example. He said, like, the good friend is like this man who sells this perfume. He opened his bag. He said, If you don't even buy from him, so if you sit around a good friend, even if you don't bother with them, you smell something nice. Or you can buy something, what you have. Good khuluq, good morals, a positive attitude to life, that problems is nothing, but that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to go through. He gives you a good head, good level. A good Muslim is a mirror to you to reflect your goodness and your ugliness. And to you, you're a good brother in this, but you're bad at that. This is what Al-Jaleez Al-Saleh, the one who sells perfume. وَمَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ السُّوءُ And the ugly friend, the bad friend, كَنَافِخِ الْكِيرِ is like a blacksmith. If you go back also in the blacksmith, you have that fan going on, that, f you know, flying fires. One, he will burn your clothes. Or you'll smell from him something bad. Would you like to hang around with somebody who's always smell bad? Would you do that? Even Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, when you come to the masjid, if you ate garlic, or onion, or you stink for whatever reason, don't come. Yeah, Prophet, you forbid us from coming to pray. Yes, if you stink, don't come. Because you're harming other Muslims. This is a bad friend. So some people, they say, well, dunya today is really bad. So I'm not going to have any friends. I'm just going to go home and hide. Or go in the mountain and hide. Or go somewhere and hide. See the Prophet say this is not even balance. And he says in a different hadith, إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُ الذِّئْبُ مِنَ الْغَنَمِ الْقَاصِيَةِ So the Prophet wants us to be gathered together. He wants the community to be, you know, tight. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّخُوا Join with the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the good friend, with the good company. And do not be separated. But a person comes and says, ah, everybody's bad. I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to hide. So the Prophet says, the shaitan is the wolf of humans. 
Shaitan doesn't come in the masjid now. Show me a shaitan can take one of us out now. It never happened. But if you are by yourself out there, shaitan takes you little by little. And Allah knows the shaitan. Thousands of years of experience. That's why Allah says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaitan is not stupid. He doesn't tell you, oh, you left the message, let, let me take you to dance, or let me take you to do something haram. You know, come on, man, you just prayed. Why don't you go to the mall and have some fun? Why don't you go to the supermarket? Why don't you, step by step, take you away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you hide, shaitan will take you, definitely. That's what the Prophet says. And the Prophet does not say anything in vain. وَمَا يَمْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيًا يُوحَىٰ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not speak from his own mind, but it's revelation that comes to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he tells you, don't hide by yourself, because when you hide, the shaitan will get you. Now what kind of friends we talk about? Because people think friends is just a friend, a human being. But it can go beyond that. How? You hide, that's number one, you're not with a human being. And two, you take your television as your friend. How many times you get angry because you can't find the remote control? That's your friend. That's what you sit with all the time. It talks to you, yeah, you can't talk back to it, but that's your friend. How many hours do you spend a day watching the idiot box? The Mifsidion in Arabic. The one that misguides you. How many times? And if you lose the remote control, you get mad at everyone in the family. You start screaming and yelling because you're so lazy to get up to turn the television on or off. This is your friend too. Or you sit on the computer and just, you know, looking for, you know, bad sites and pornography or this and that. That's your friend too. Or listening, sticking your, you know, phone and listening to garbage music. See brother, do you know, remember a few years ago, they made a movie about a guy who was very fit, very fit. And he decided, he said, let me try to eat McDonald's all the time. See that McDonald's for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And he became extremely fat. And he can't get rid of that. Garbage in, garbage out. Same thing was, Inna sam'a. Listen to the Quran, Akhi. What the Quran says. Inna sam'a wal basara wal fuada. Indeed, your sight, your hearing, your heart, kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula. You are responsible for what you see and what you hear and what your heart absorbs. Because if you listen to rap music, and garbage music. What do you think is you're gonna be? Nothing but garbage. Pure brothers, garbage. Garbage will come out of your mouth. Garbage will come in your behavior. And some Muslims, they say, we want to make Islam like rap. Why do we imitate them? Why don't you have your own identity? Some Muslims, they think, we can use, make music like the rappers and we'll bring Islam into it. Yeah, Muhammad, what is this? This is what the Prophet says. And you will follow them blindly. You are blind when you follow these, these kind of people. You're not proud you are a Muslim? You're not proud you have that identity? You want to make your hair like the Kafir? You want to dress like the Kafir? You want to sing like them? We are the one who's supposed to be the example. Come to Khaira Ummah. You became the best nation. How? By, by making my hair like uh, Travolta or dancing like this or that. This is not how you become a good example to this society. Society needs good people. Society needs ethical people. The surrounding around you makes you what you are. You see Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. he's warning the youth when they get married. What does he say? Be aware of a beautiful woman that grew up in garbage. She's beautiful. 
she get attracted to her. But what she made of, because her society is garbage, and she grew up in garbage, she is garbage, and she will get you down. And we say behind every great man, woman, man, is a great woman. See a man telling his kids, see kids, I raised you very well when you're young, and I discipline you very well when you're older. And even before you were born, I was very good to you. He said, how? We weren't born. He said, I chose a good mother. See, society, whatever you have. This is why, you cry. I didn't take this friend. You want to come to the masjid? Friends? Come on, let's shoot some pool. Let's watch the game. Let's do this, let's do that. Take you away. And then, أخي, our youth is lost. We will pass away. We're supposed to hand Islam to the youth. That they don't know anything about Islam. And I mentioned to you last week, you tell your kids, they're 12 or 13 or 15, wear a hijab. And you say, no, why? why should I tell them that? You know, I'm going to leave it up to them. Their heart will tell them. Their heart will tell them if they know, if they know Islam, if they know Quran, if they, they know Deen. But if they don't know any, how their heart will tell them? They're watching television, they're watching all the garbage, listen to garbage music in the car, they do all of this, watching on the internet. So what is Islam is going to come to them? What are they going to wake up and say, wow, yeah, I'm going to be a Muslim, I'm going to wear a hijab. It's not going to happen. And you suffer. And you come and you say, why my son is in jail? Why my son on drugs? Why my daughter is pregnant? Why this, why that? Because the society, you start, kullukum masool. Every one of you is responsible. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum masoolun an ra'iyyati. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa every one of us is responsible in his place. At home you are responsible. If you are a man, be a man and be in charge of your, your house. And if you are a woman, take care of your children. Because mother makes future children. And the choice of a good mother will do that. Akhlaq, how to raise your children in a good morality. You have to have surround them. I'll tell you a small story happened to me. My son was four years old. And I was living next door to, you know, a neighbor who was non-Muslim. And I came home from work at seven o'clock and my son comes and he took a glass of soda. And he said, cheer dad, ah, that, 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 that looks good. I was, I said, what is this? I said, what did you, where did you learn that? I said, daddy, I go to Johnny next door. And his father, Chris, come from work and he goes to the refrigerator, open the beer and go, ah, cheer. So I told my wife, please don't, don't let my son go play with him. But you can't forget because let, let, let Johnny come and play in our backyard. She kids pick, they're a sponge. If you don't teach him Islam, if you don't surround yourself with good Muslims around you, you're gonna lose them. And then you cry. Wallahi, you cry. That your 25 or 30 years old son or daughter are lost. Who caused that losses? You did. That's how you raised them. And that's how you lost them. We have to know our society. We have to get to know one another as a community. Why we say, well, let's build something like a community center. And I'm not hearing advertising about it. Build anything that collects our youth and bring the families together. When your kids want to get married, at least you know your society. Look how many, mashallah, person in the masjid. Two, three hundred people. And they have families. And they have daughters and sons. If we know one another, then we can marry one another. We trust one another. But you come and say, you know, my daughter is marrying somebody. I don't know who she is. Or my son is marrying someone. I don't know where it comes from. You know, the marriage now, most of marriages happen on the internet. And a few years later, what happened? Divorce happened. He married something that, you know, it's like buying something on the internet, you don't even know what it is. Yeah, she's cute. She put the best pictures that she has. And he put the best act that he has. But you know, you don't know the actual product. You see the Prophet say, تَخَيَّرُوا Choose. I didn't choose from the internet. But this is what we go to. We follow. You will follow them step by step. 
even if they enter a lizard hole, we enter right behind them. Islam actually had the solution. That's why Allah says, Kuntum, you were the best nation brought to mankind. Join what is good. Have good friends. He said, Don't let anybody enter your house except the good mu'min. And no, nobody eats your food except the good Muslim. Even if your own brother or sister are, you know, away from Islam, invite them, but invite them in Islam, but don't let them eat if they continue to persist and be like that. Because Allah warned us in Islam too. He said, Allah had cursed the people before us. On the tongue of Dawood, alayhi salatu wasalam, wa Isa, thalika bima asal wa kanu ya'tadun. They transgress. How? Kanu la yatanahawna ammun karim fa'alu. The friends, people get together, and you find this guy steal, this guy rob, this guy does this, and he still eat with him. Wa la yamna'u thalika niyakuna jalisu. He sits with him, he plays with him, he takes him as a friend, and he knows he's a thief. So this is, فَبَمَّا عَلِمَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكُ When Allah learned that, ضَرَبَ قُلُوبِ بَعْضِهَمْ بَبَعْضِ my brothers, the topic does not take 20 minutes. It needs hours to understand our deen. But be aware of friends. Be aware of your kids' friends. Be aware of your family surroundings. It's so essential and it's so important. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Musaleen Sayyidna Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Read the Quran, brothers and sisters. This verse in Surah Al-Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا I wish I took the route of the Prophet. يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِ لَمَا اتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا I wish I did not take this person as my friend. لَخَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ This friend become a shaytan. لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولَ my people take the Quran behind their back. They don't open it. They don't look at it. See, that's our maintenance book. If you don't read it, you don't know how to maintain you. And I'll conclude with a verse from Surah Safat. Listen, brothers and sisters. This is an episode in the Day of Judgment. Two people grow together. Friends. But then, one of them went to, the, to paradise. And he's looking for his friends because, you know, in the day of judgment, if you, inshallah, enter paradise, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aj'alna min ahli jannah. We can see each other. You can see your friends. You can see the people that you love. So this guy, out of love for his friendship, grew up with him. Allah said in the day of judgment, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ they, they get together and they look in. One of them said, قَالَ قَائِلُ مِّنْهُمْ One of them said, إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِيمٍ He used to have a friend. يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ His friend used to challenge him. He said, do you believe in this praying and fasting? أخي, this is America, 21st century. Let's listen to music or watch television, go to the movies, masjid. You know, this all people go to the masjid. When you get old, go there. That's what his friend said. So what he says, when we die, later on, and become dust and bone, we're going to get back, man, it's a long way. So he's asking, what is he? Where's my friend? When he look, people in paradise can, be, can see the people in the hellfire suffering. He looked, he found him in the hellfire. What did he say to him? You almost got me with you. But by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would have been in the hellfire with you. And then Allah poses a question to everyone. You're not going to die, brothers and sisters? Wallahi, every one of us will die one day. It's a fact. 
And then, إِلَّا مَوْتَتَنَا الْأُولَى وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُعَذَّبِينَ This is the good believers. Once they die, Allah would not punish them anymore. Yeah, we suffer in dunya. And then, when you, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ Whoever moved from the hellfire, وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسْ And enter paradise, he really won. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ هَذَا Indeed, this is لَهُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ This is the great victory. And then Allah would underline this. لِمِثْلِ هَذَا For this, فَلْيَعْمَلْ Act, work, action. فَلْيَعْمَلْ الْعَامِلُونَ But who would listen? Finally, brothers and sisters, I say, فَسَتَذْكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ You'll remember what I'm saying to you in the Day of Judgment. وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ I'll leave my matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah watched over His servant. اللهم أهدنا في من هدين وعافنا في من عافين وتولنا في من تولين وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا وصرف عنا شر ما خضيت ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه وأقم الصلاة